All right, we're going to use our new test set to check a CFL 0 to 10 volt uh, ballast. And you're saying, gee, Bob, this doesn't look very scientific. In fact, I can't see anything. Well, here's our cardboard box. Scientific enough for you? It better be. We've got a light meter sitting under there. It says 477, 476, about that. That's what it's seeing. We have a digital voltmeter here that I currently have set on amps. And uh, we are going to be doing a Philips Advance Mark 7 0 to 10 volt IZT 2S26 M5 BS ballast. And of course, our test set, which we uh, constructed, is using a uh, Sunrise ZP600 FAM by Lightalier. It's a 0 to 10 volt slide dimmer. And we can use this to uh, try and pick out the top and bottom points on this uh, ballast, this 0 to 10 volt ballast. But first, let me state that the open wire voltage on this critter was. 10 volts straight up and now I'm going to short it through an ammeter and you can see the light go down there maybe I'm going to short it through an ammeter and I got about 130 microamps so that's about a tenth of what we were uh, reading on the original ballast that we used to set this thing up with so we put it on volts and let's get our positive line attached and it's turning out that the tough thing to do is to find the top end and the bottom end on this thing. Uh, hold on. Why am I having a problem here? Okay, it helps to have the ballast positive attached to the uh, multimeter lead. So we're going to try and pick around and see where this thing first starts to dim. I'm going to put down 464 as our maximum output in foot candles and slowly decrease the slider. <clears throat> now this has put a little load on it already. I'm at 9.85 volts. So let's bring this thing down until I see some dimming and it's likely to look radical at first. So is it 9.85? Let's take it down, take it down, take it down. And I'm looking for an indication on the light meter that we have hit the beginning of dimming. And, oop, oh, yeah, it's radical when you hit it. That's very interesting. <clears throat> Who knew? All right, 404. We try and bring it back up 462, 463 at 8.17 volts. We move it down just a little, 8.05. All right, 7.88, still nothing. 7.8, still nothing. And then all of a sudden, everything wants to jump. Let me see, 7.8. 7.7 .7. taking it down I'm still at about 464 7.6 I think I saw a tiny bit of dimming like about four foot candles yep so we're gonna have to call this about 7.6 volts wow that's the top 7.6 volts. This is a 0 to 10 volt command thing. In fact, let me see if I can't get that a little better. Yep, 7.6. I think I saw a tiny bit of dimming, like about four foot candles. Yep. So we're going to have to call this about 7.6 volts. Wow, that's the top. So if you're setting up a controller and you're set it for 0 to 10, uh, you've got over 3 volts on the top end <clears throat> where the light's not even dimming at all. 
Uh, that's why it's important to make these tests with the luminaires and the drivers and the ballasts so you know what you're doing. So we're going to go down to 7.5 just for fun and at 7.5 I've got 414 let's take it down to 7 very very touchy control at 7 we've got 329 foot candles uh, this is a fluorescent source so it's going to be unstable unfortunately for us at 6 volts I've got about 190 foot candles at uh, 5 volts I've got about 115 foot candles at 4 volts I've got about 74 foot candles at 3 volts I've got about 53 foot candles at 2 volts come on come on come on come on not a linear slide I've got about 36 and let's go to 1.5 and see if it's still dimming wait a minute yeah just it is kind of so there isn't a lot of action on the bottom end at 1.5 volts I've got 28 foot candles and at 1 volt mm, 23 so that isn't much between 23 and 28 for half a volt so let's go ahead and take this thing down as far as it goes 0.72 I've got about 23 so where's the bottom of my dimming range let me take it back up take it back up until I get it to mm, yeah 1 volt 1 volt I would have to call the bottom of the dimming range and there isn't a lot of dimming action right near it so if you're setting up the controller and you're setting up a daylighting system and it, it's probably different going up than down let me put it back at 4 volts kind of going up what have I got well it's fluorescent so it's going to be unstable so if you were to be setting this up on a controller you'd want to put your top end around 7.6 7.7 volts you would assume it's going to start dimming down from there uh, and that it's not going to go much further than at a bottom of 1.5 volts and that's why it's important to have something that you can use to see what the response of the luminaires are because you're probably going to be putting in programming that you want a certain 0 to 10 volt voltage out and that's why we have a little test set for it let's take a look at what we got from this uh, IZT type ballast controlled with this preset slide dimmer and the whole point was to force these control voltages to different points and see in 0 to 100 percent what we were getting for output from the CFL that this ballast was controlling and this is a good one we've got an exponential curve I don't think this has much to do with it being inside a cardboard box or anything like that uh, we're not a scientific laboratory here but when you're on the job site you're not a scientific laboratory either but you're going to attempt to set things up as well as you can so here's a common thing you get a setup person the commissioning the lighting commissioning agent sets the thing up and says 
I have got 20% demand response set in that space you're looking at. What he did was he set the controller for 8 volts. Now up here what we're seeing is this is 100% light output and here is 10 volts and here curiously enough is 8 volts and so the lighting setup person said I've given you a demand response of 20% because I told the controller to put out 8 volts well guess what when the output of the controller reduces from 10 volts to 8 volts what do we see for illumination reduction in that space nothing zero okay let's look at some of our other points of interest what what lighting commissioning people need to do is check their own work had this stuff been going smoothly all this time we wouldn't have an acceptance test program let's look at some points of interest we'll take that 80 percent this is 80 percent output dropped down from a hundred and that might be a perfectly reasonable place to put your demand response set point how about 20 to 25 percent output on the bottom okay and that would be about somewhere in this range why is this of interest to us because this is where we want to drive our lighting down in the state of California for an automatic day lighting system so if you characterize the response of 0 to 10 volt devices to the change in the control voltage you now have some idea where to put your upper and lower points for daylighting good place for the upper daylighting point would be slightly above the flat spot this way when sunlight first begins to intrude into the space you'll have a little bit of response where the light from the controller where the lights do not go down to help keep you above your uh, combined help keep your combined illumination above your reference illumination by several foot candles so that's a good point your other point you would want would be down here you want a minimum 75 percent illumination reduction in a daylighting system in the state of California you needn't really go below that so anything down in this region would be good so let's have a looky at that that would be somewhere in the neighborhood of that's four volts there's five volts there's six volts something around four and a half volt output and then here you could be eight so you would limit the response of this thing from eight to four and a half volts or so for uh, daylighting and for your demand response you would want to have a control voltage output if you're shooting for 20 percent demand response reduction or set point of about 7 volts because there's about 7 volts so this shows you that you need to characterize you you set up people need to characterize the output of the luminaire now this is an American ballast American style ballast so you'll note it does not go out uh, you're not going to be able to put it out with a 0 to 10 volt control line also this curve is something you're just going to have to live with and I believe you'd see something similar to this on site